This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. So the first thing you think about when you, you're in a ditch or you're in a problem, you're in a situation, the first thing you think about is your relationship with God and that you, He loves you. That's first, first base. I have a relationship with God and He loves me. Say it. I have a relationship with God and He loves me. And if you should stop right there, you, you, you good. Omaha, Nebraska, are you ready for change? For one day only, experience three life-transforming sessions with Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Change Experience 2019. This is perfect teaching, this is wholesome teaching, this is sound doctrine, this is good, this is freeing. Join us at the Hilton Omaha downtown on Friday, September 13th. Call, text, or go online to register today. y'all came expecting something, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I hope you came expecting something. I mean, big time, man. Let's go uh, uh, to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 1. And we've been talking about knowing God, and I really have been just seeking God for some uh, significant perspective of the Word of God. In other words, just not continuing to say what others have always said, but to really dig into it and find out where it fits. Amen? Amen. So this is going to be a blessing to you tonight. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1, and let's read verse 1 through 3 out loud together. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Ready? Read. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, <laughs> the, the, key, the key word was together. Okay, they just put it up there. Y'all don't bring your Bibles no more either since it's going to be on the screen, right? They're depending on y'all back there now. Okay, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Ready? Read. Simon Peter, a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, now, hold on for a moment there. And now, look what he just said. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the knowledge. So, so how, how, how can you get grace to be multiplied unto you? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And how can you get peace be, to be multiplied unto you? Through the knowledge of God. So by knowing God, grace will be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace. So by knowing God, peace will be made unto you. So, I mean... There's a lot of things I'm going to come after tonight that you, you have to be careful when you hear people preach that you don't go ahead and draw a conclusion to something mm -hmm. too quick. Mm -hmm. All right? So grace can be multiplied. Peace can be multiplied. See, the grace of God, unmerited favor, can be multiplied. The peace of God, security in the midst of turmoil, can be multiplied. How can it be multiplied? It can be multiplied through your knowing, your knowing of Jesus, not your mental asset. Know him through the, the knowledge that you have of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look at verse 3, very important here, verse 3. 
according as his divine power hath given unto us, underline these next two words, all things. His divine power has given unto us all things. Healing would be a part of this all things. Prosperity would be a part of this all things. Peace would be a part of this all things. Grace would be a part of this all things. All things that pertain unto life, everything that pertains unto life, everything that pertains unto life, everything that pertains unto life and godly, so everything that pertains unto a godly life, how? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. All things are being obtained by knowing him. All things that can be obtained by knowing him and through the knowledge of him. Now, that's pretty powerful because we haven't really understood the nature and the character of God. Uh, we've not really understood him enough. I, I mean, think about it. If you're going to know God, you got to get in the Word, right? When you get in the Word, the Word of God will give you more knowledge of God, and as you obtain more knowledge of God, then you can begin to trust God, okay? And then you begin to walk in faith where he is concerned. I think sometimes we play this little magic game and, you know, pretend that Jesus is here and have our conversation with him and we say we know God. No, you, you, learn, you, you learn him, you, uh, you know him through his word. God and his word are the same. Uh, a, a Christian life absent of the word of God is going to end up being an ignorant life. You know him through the Word. The Word of God tells you about him. You know him. See, see, here's the thing about it. You get in the Word, and the Word's going to show you Jesus, and Jesus is going to show you the Father. <laughs> you get in the Word, you see Jesus, and Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. But it's not going to ever be absent from the Word. Everything's going to start with the Word of God. Amen? Amen? In the beginning was the what? Word. And whatever you begin must start with what? Word. The Word. Turn to your neighbor and say, whatever you're starting has got to start with the Word. Think about that. All things that pertain unto life and godliness come through the knowledge of Him. Now, it's going to be hard to disbelieve God once you really know Him. Now, think about this. We're in this for the relationship. Christianity, the priority of Christianity is the relationship. We're in it for the relationship. Pastor Ken and I were talking this morning about how important in these lessons that I'm teaching, uh, repetition. Drive it in your head, drive it in your head, drive it in your head. Christianity is about the relationship. It's about the relationship. It is about the relationship. I'm not a Christian because, you know, really, I'm not a Christian because, you know, we believe you're supposed to do this or you, but no, I'm, I'm in, I'm, before I get to that, I'm in it for the relationship. So how can I have a relationship with, with, with God if I don't have a relationship with his word, which tells me everything I need to know about God? So everything starts with, come on, with the Word. And so what has happened last week, I believe I taught you on the fact that, you know, we're getting your needs met by knowing God. Getting your needs met by knowing God. It's the, I don't know how old she was last week, but the three or four-year-old child that jumps in her father's arms and she does not have to confess with her mouth and believe in her heart that her father won't drop her. She just rests in the love relationship she has with the Father. She just rests in knowing that because he loves me, he's not going to drop me. It's the same picture you and I should have. Because God loves me, he's not going to let me die. Because he loves me, then he's going to get me out of this ditch. Everything you go through has to automatically take you to the confidence you have in the love that God has for you. I'm telling you, no matter what you go through, 
the first thing that ought to come up before you say a scripture, before you do anything deep and spiritual, the first thing you remind yourself, you need to renew your mind with this. In fact, this, you need to renew the spirit of your mind with this. When you renew the spirit of your mind, then it's something that comes automatically. And so the first thing you think about when you, you're in a ditch or you're in a problem, you're in a situation, the first thing you think about is your relationship with God and that you, He loves you. That's first, first base. I have a relationship with God and He loves me. Say it. I have a relationship with God, I have a relationship with God and, he me. and He loves me. And if you should stop right there, you, you, you're good. Because there's something about knowing that God loves you and receiving the love that God has for you that works your faith. Faith worketh by love, not by how much you love God. Faith worketh by how much you believe God loves you. Faith works. Your faith, which is your response to what, the, what, what grace has already made available, your faith worketh by your belief in God's love for you. That's how your faith works. So you, so you can't try to be, be mechanical and ignore all of the relational piece. Hmm. I'm in a relationship with God. I know God loves me. And then you move into the mechanics. And the mechanics now are born out of the relationship. The mechanics are now born out of the relationship. So what happens when you become a mechanical Christian without the relationship? The same thing that happens when you try to be mechanical with your husband or wife without a relationship. The same thing that happens when you try to be mechanical to your friend without a relationship. We got to just set things in priority. The relationship first. Belief in the love that God has you for you in that relationship. And then out of that, out of that relationship, things are born. And that's what we're going to be looking at tonight, how the, the different things that are born out of that relationships. You see, what happens that I believe that one of the biggest problems in the body of Christ is that we learn the mechanics of how Christianity works. We learn how faith works, and that's good. You should, because sometimes learning the mechanics, if you have any kind of relationship with God, will increase that relationship with God. But I'm telling you, there are some people that have come into the body of Christ. They don't, they don't, they've not cultivated. The relationship with God was not emphasized. Therefore, they switched to, to over to just all mechanics, and they know every principle of faith, every principle of co confession, every principle of, of prosperity, but it doesn't lead back to the personal relationship. And that will become a problem just in the illustration of you trying to be mechanical with people you're in, well, be mechanical with people that you don't have a relationship with. Think about that now. Be mechanical with people that you don't have a relationship with. It's almost insulting, isn't it, for somebody to expect that they can run these mechanics across you and there's not even a relationship born. I mean, what would you think of a, a guy at church that just came up and, and kissed you on the lips? But his, his mechanical self would be slapped, wouldn't he? <laughs> Fop. All right, now, follow me carefully here. So, we learn all of these things to do, and many times we try to put them into practice without really knowing God. Without really knowing God. The mechanics of Christianity do not produce all things. What did he say produced all things? Knowing God. Knowing God will produce all things, even when you don't have all the mechanics down. Knowing God will take you to the place where you need to be. Knowing God. And then he begins to teach you even more about the mechanics because you know God. Now, The, the piece that has always been somewhat confusing in this whole deal is the, is the situation concerning the transformation. In other words, I'm a, uh, a, a person that used to be, you know, you had problems, 
um, you know, you got issues in your life, and, and you have learned from church that you have to do these 10 things in order to deal with that issue, and you got to do these five things in order to, do, to deal with that issue, and then you hear people say, don't, 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 don't. And I taught you on performance-based Christianity. Lots of people have a problem with that teaching on performance-based Christianity because um, they don't understand what we're saying is that performance-based Christianity is you doing something to try to get God to do something, and that is based on a performance-based covenant of the law. So they conclude, under grace, you don't have to do no works, which is incorrect, which is incorrect. There are good works, and then there are works of the law. There are works of faith, and then there are works of the law. But I want to back up a little bit and, and, and escort you into something here. I don't quite know how to call it. That's as much foundation as I can give you. I'm just too excited, so I got to get going. Mm -hmm. So let's start in 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 17. In order for you to understand all of this, especially your relationship with God, I'm going to have to back up a little bit and start you off with, what happened when you got born again and give you so you can and once you understand what happened when you got born again then we'll talk about the works of the law versus the works of faith and we'll see where we go from there all right now let's look at verse 17 let's read verse 17 out loud together ready read therefore if any man be in Christ he is a old things are behold all things are become all right, now look at what he said here. If any man be in Christ, all right, how many of you are in Christ? All right. All right, he is a new creature. So you being in Christ has put the new creation in you. So you have the new creation on the inside of you. Being in Christ puts the new creation on the inside of you. All right, now watch this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are what? Passed away. Old things are what? Passed away. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like, when I read that, when I became born again and a new creature, and it said old things have passed away, all my old things won't go. <laughs> can, I, can I get a witness in here? That it's like, you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. And I was trying to figure out, well, what? what, what? I must have didn't do it right, because I got a lot of old stuff here. All right, now watch this. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, here's what I believe he's saying. The old thing that passed away was not all of your actions. The old thing that passed away was that root, that old man. That old man passed away and all things became new. The new creation came in. So the old man is gone. Say out loud, the old man is gone. The, old man is gone. the new man is here. The new man is here. Old man is gone. Old man is gone. New, man is new man is here. Has everybody got that? All right. So here we go. What then is real repentance? Okay, yeah, yeah, tell me the little traditional thing that you've been told all your life. Come on, I heard it. What, what, what's repentance? Change your heart. Change your direction. Change your mind. Turn around. Now, you can use that big word if you want to, but it's still wrong. No, no, it's not wrong, it's incomplete. Well, you were going the wrong way anyway. I'll just stop you. I just helped you and didn't want you to get out there. Um, we have defined repentance as a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of direction. You're not wrong. You're not incorrect. We, have, we were not incorrect. But how many of you know if you're incomplete, you follow what I'm saying? you're not going to get it like you, you need to get it. So, let me give you the definition of real repentance. Real repentance is having the right belief, 
having the right belief of who you are. Real repentance is when you have the right belief of your identity in Christ. Real repentance is having the right belief of who you are in Christ. Boy, that's powerful. Real repentance is now that you've repented, you believe I am the righteousness of God. You believe I am redeemed. You believe I am a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Real repentance is an issue of right believing concerning who you are. Because your born-again process was all about the old going away and the new coming in. Real repentance is, <clears throat> well, why do I say you're incomplete when you say change your heart, change your mind, change your direction? You're just forgetting one word. Real repentance is defined, it's a change of belief which will now change your heart, your mind, and your direction. But if you don't change your belief about who you are, it won't change your heart, your mind, direction, and you ain't going to be turning around. Right. Mm -hmm. See, you'll go through a form, but it, repentance is, is a change of belief, a change of heart, mind and direction. But you got to change your belief first. Now listen to me carefully. If you don't change, if you don't change your believing, if, you're, if you don't have the right believing concerning who you are now as a result of being in Christ, yeah. guess what happens? You'll go around bragging about being a Christian, but under attack, you really don't believe that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you'll end up responding the same way you've always responded. And that's what's going on with the church right now. You got a whole bunch of people who wear t-shirts and titles, but they don't believe, they have not changed their belief in who they are now in Christ. So when stuff happens, wait a minute, you pause. First of all, I'm the righteousness of God. I've been redeemed. I'm a son of the most high God. Watch this. And I believe in the finished works of Jesus Christ. It's just what Paul did every time he saw somebody sin. He reminded them of who they were and what they had. And every time Paul, when, when, when they were sleeping around, Paul said, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? When they were trying to sue each other, Paul said, know you not that one day you'll judge the angels? Why? Why did he continue to remind them of who they were and what they had? Because everything about your life is going to be based on, once you get born again, it's going to be based on, do I, do I have the right believing concerning who I am? Mm. Do I believe who I am? And it's going to be tested in a plethora of ways. When you mess up and the devil's going to try to say, look at what you did, you're going to be tested. And if you believe, you, can you stand up in the middle of your messed up and say, I am the righteousness of God? When, when the doctor sees something and he declares some sickness on your body, you, do you really believe in, this, in, this, in who you are in Christ Jesus enough to say, I've been redeemed from sickness. My body is immune to cancer. Everything seems to always go back to the attack of the identity. What's the first thing Satan attacked when he, when he saw Adam and Eve in the garden? Identity. First thing he attacked when he saw Jesus in the wilderness? Identity. Same plan. I've got to constantly attack your belief in who you are in Christ. And if I can be successful in convincing you not to believe that you are who you are in Christ, everything else will flow. Because if I can get you not to believe that, 
and you no longer believe you had a change of mind, you'll see your mind wouldn't change. You'll see your heart wouldn't change. You'll see your direction wouldn't change. And you'll see that instead of you taking a 180 degree turn, it was 360. And you were right back where you were. Many Christians today miss out on the abundant life God promises because they are only practicing the mechanics of Christianity. We've learned the mechanics of how confession works. We've learned the mechanics of how giving and receiving works. And many try, times we try to put them into practice without really knowing God. In this five message series, you will experience the totality of your salvation in Christ through your intimate knowledge of knowing Him. We don't understand that what drives the mechanics of our Christianity is the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And from that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the overflow of that personal relationship with Jesus Christ begins to bring us into what to do. Get the Power from Knowing God five message series for a love gift of $25 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Breakthrough comes from not a word of God, but a word from God. Men, are you ready? We're about to rise to another level at the 2019 Mentality Conference at World Changers New York. Hosted by Dr. Kreplo Dollar. Be empowered, get refueled, and become the man that God has called you to be. With guest speakers Michael T. Smith, Gary Taylor, Kenneth Fuller, Ken Terry. God came down in his very essence and walked in between the two pieces with a man and declared his vow with a man and established a covenant with a man. God was walking the blood with a man. You don't want to miss this. To register, visit creplodollarministries.org. Grace Life Academy is a library of grace teachings the Holy Spirit has poured into me since God asked if I would be a student of grace. Now you can join me on this lifelong journey to experience God's grace in every area of our lives. Grace Life Academy is for everyone, your spouse, your kids, your friends, hey, even introduce it to your study groups. It's unlimited access to grace teachings, access to the e-courses, study guides, and online community quizzes in as little as 15 minutes a day. I'm excited as you can tell, and I don't want you to miss out on this great opportunity, so stay tuned for more from my announcement. The Grace Life Academy is an innovative approach to learning God's Word, and the best news is that it's free for 30 days. Now is the time for you to take control of your life and join Grace Life Academy. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to mygracelifeacademy.com. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.